Now in this, the final lesson of the cosmology section, we're going to let our hair down and deal with the really speculative way out issues. And let's start off by thinking about what we've learned so far. We've got this wonderful concordance cosmology, this precision cosmology. The trouble is that it relies on having an inf inflaton field to drive inflation, it relies upon dark matter, and it relies on dark energy. And we don't know what any of these three things actually are. So where are we going to go from here, given we have a universe built about three unknown things, and oh yes, there's that 5% of stuff we actually understand, 95% uh, you know, of the universe we don't know what it is. Uh, so Brian, do you think there's going to be any progress observationally on solving these mysteries over the next, say, 10 years? Well, certainly it's my hope, because, you know, when everything looks good, the best thing to do is look a little harder and Normally there's some mistakes, you know, so I think the hope is by digging deeper into, you know, dark matter and its properties, dark energy and its properties, thinking about perhaps inflation and its properties. We have the opportunity to even test that possibly. We're going to hopefully find something that doesn't look quite what we expect and in that sense we'll, we'll learn something. I guess there are two possibilities here. One is that we could get more and more accurate measurements of, say, the equation of state parameter of the distribution of dark matter, and it will all fit the standard model, the model we've just talked about. Yep. And that, in some sense, is a pessimistic point of view, because if everything just fits that, it doesn't give us any clues as to what they all are, actually are. Just, this is what the, the trouble that particle physics has been in for some decades now. They came up in the 70s with a standard model of particle physics, which has been far better than anyone expected. It just fit every piece of data that's come along since too well. So they've got no clues as to anything better. Yeah, they sort of have a box there that uh, really fits together neatly, neat, neat and nicely. There are, of course, a couple of mysteries in particle physics. Uh, the fact that there are matter at all is a bit of a mystery. The fact that neutrinos have mass, uh, you know, those are things that they haven't yet uh, been able to explain. And what this stuff is that we see astrophysically, dark matter. Looks like it should be a particle. The current, you know, uh, theories don't uh, explain that. So there is hope that at least there's something there. But they're sort of in the going out on a very large field with a very small torch and looking for the keys. Uh, and they haven't found anything yet. Yeah. So I guess the optimistic point of view would be that we get more and more precise measurements of all these parameters and we find something that doesn't fit the model. A That's surprise, right. much like we had a model before your work on dark energy and you got the observations of the supernovae and it didn't fit and that was really exciting. It's when all the models fit that it's boring. So let's hope there are some really un, un, amazing, unanticipated things buried in the data. As we get better and better measurements, they will show up. Right, and the good news is, you know, things are pretty good, but there are at least a few things to go and look at more closely that don't quite fit. Yes, these anomalies, these things that don't quite fit the current model, at the moment none of them is really compelling. Yeah. But there might be a few signs, a flag post to where there might be new physics coming in. And one of these discrepancies we've already talked about, which is that for some of the microwave background multipoles there's too little power. But that's going to be a very hard one to pursue. Yeah, because there's only one, one universe to look at, and so that's going to be a tough one to pursue, I'm afraid. How about dark matter? Uh, are there things that don't quite fit with our theories of dark matter? Well, of course, we're missing the particle, so one could hope to look for a particle, and we've talked about how you might do that. But then if we look astrophysically, there's a funny few things. You know, we have a model of how dark matter should distribute itself in the universe. And because it only interacts by gravity, it's pretty simple, relatively speaking, uh, to do that. So one of the things you predict is how many galaxies there are of different sizes. And when we go out and look at the universe, the universe is full of big galaxies, just like the model predicts. But when we get down to the little galaxies around our own Milky Way, we don't see the little galaxies, which should be there uh, in large abundance. Now, it might be just due to complicated baryonic physics. The atoms were, uh, you know, associated with may, for whatever reason, not be associated with these little clumps of matter, of dark matter, uh, in which case you just wouldn't be able to see them. But it could also be that dark matter is not completely cold. It actually has a velocity that is interesting, and that turns out that would smear things out and perhaps make its behavior on these scales of galaxy sizes a little different than the nominal really big massive dark matter particle we haven't yet discovered. Yes, so on very large scales like the microwave background, dark matter theory behaves beautifully. It's only on right. the small scales. So one, pos one 
possible anomaly is the lack of tiny galaxies. Another one that's very controversial is what happens right in the middle of galaxies. We talked about this a bit in the first course, but some computer simulations predict that if you plot the density of dark matter, it should have a real peak, a cusp in the middle of galaxies. And in fact, the observations seem to show a much flatter distribution of matter. Now, this is a really hard observation to make because there's a lot of baryons in the middle of galaxies. So unless you can subtract that off very accurately, it's unclear. And also, it's really pushing the limits of the numerical simulations. So some people think this is a problem, some people don't. But maybe but these are both propping up on small scales. And so there have been a lot of exotic suggestions for ways you could modify dark matter if these problems turn out to be real. And we don't know they're real yet. Right. So you've talked about one having slightly higher speed. People have also talked about dark matter that can maybe interact with itself, self-interacting dark matter. So two dark matter particles don't just fly past each other, but maybe bounce off or transform in some way. But if they do that, then they should, when they interact, they're going to do something like put out photons that you might actually be able to see. And there have been claims that people have seen these. There's, there's a mysterious gamma ray haze around the middle of our galaxy, and it's not at all clear where it's coming from. There are many other contenders, so it's yeah. by no means come definitely. There are also people talking about weirder things like Bose-Einstein condensates of dark matter and so on. But at the moment, how, how do you assess it? Do we know there's a problem here, or is it suggestive? Yeah. It's certainly, to my mind, enough to be interested in. And at some level, the theory we've talked about doesn't actually care uh, about dark matter's detailed properties, as long as there's dark matter there. And everything we've just described actually is more or less dark matter as assumed by the model. It's the details of the dark matter that we really want to understand. So I, I don't think there's a problem. I think there's an opportunity to go and sort out what dark matter is. And I feel relatively confident. I think there is a reasonable opportunity in the next 10 years we're going to sort out what dark matter is. And that will be a huge you know, discovery when it happens. Mm -hmm. Now, even if we manage to figure out what dark matter and dark energy, even in this inflation field, actually are, in some sense that still leaves us with the biggest problem of all, which is where did the universe come from in the first place? I mean, we can observe back to Redshift 1000 or so from the microwave background. We can go back another, to only a minute or so after the Big Bang by looking at nuclear reactions. In our particle accelerators, we can duplicate conditions back to about, say, maybe 10 to the minus 9 of a second after the Big Bang. So we know how matter behaves in those conditions. Yep. And if this inflation theory is right, that pushes us back uh, two or three or... Um, back to maybe 10 to the minus 40 of a second, so much further back. But of course, that's still not all the way back to the Big Bang. What's happened at 10 to the minus 50 of a second, 10 to the minus 100, 10 to the minus 1,000, 10 to the minus a million, yep. 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 10, etc. Or, or is there even that? I mean, you're, you're presuming there is a T equals zero, but it's not, you know, it's not completely obvious to me. When we talk about the Big Bang, we have to be careful. What we're really talking about is a time when the universe is really hot and dense where the clock was sort of reset. Hmm. And so we can go back to that time of inflation, which is 10 to the minus 35 seconds is our best guess. And it may well be we can probe that by looking at gravitational waves ringing through the universe. We may have detected them, we may not. We'll, we'll figure that out soon enough. But we can look back to that far. But what comes before that? That almost becomes a metaphysical question because it's not clear we can know. It's not clear we can observe. And, uh, you know, the ideas we've talked about of internal inflation, well, how do you test them? Not yes. at all obvious. So we can't really push our laws of physics behind because we've got relativity, which deals, as we've talked about in this course, with curvature of space-time, very massive things. We've got quantum mechanics, which is all about waves, deals with very small things. But for this, the entire universe and no size, we need both. And we don't have a theory of quantum gravity, or rather we have too many and there's no evidence to distinguish them. So we can't observe this early on. We've got no good theory. What are we going to do? I think it's probably time we got some theoretical input on this. Yeah, that's probably a good idea.